Discussing a vast majority of video game universes where the odds are so insanely stacked against you that all you can pretty much do is turn around and kiss your ass goodbye. Trying to prevent mutating, fighting abominations, and just surviving seem like a distant dream if we were suddenly transported into the realms of impossible settings and scenarios. But not every video game universe would be such an instant loss when it comes to your mortality. When it comes to the apocalypse, most people create a dramatization of the undead coming back to life as something we call zombies. But but in a certain story, the characters refer to them as walkers. But after covering universes where the zombies actually transform in a short amount of time, or develop murderous appendages, or even just do more than walk around and bite, I tend to look at this franchise and tend to think, wow, this might be possible for once. So this week, we're looking at the walk, don't run, drama-centric, don't get bit, aim for the head, how the hell do their bodies even function, does natural decay not even set in, had millions of people loving a show about the dead, but now they say the show is dead, revived point and click adventure to honor the season pass, a little girl can survive but every grown man can't, ninja zombies when lying around, growling out loud when taking a stroll, if a character dies, we riot, euphemisms for how living people are actually the dead themselves, this time we are not asking but telling you why you would probably survive survive the walking dead zombie apocalypse <laughs> Side note, I'm trying to keep these videos to strictly video game universes, for now. The Walking Dead, the comics anyways, do have Telltale's universe set in the same story of the comic series written by Robert Kirkman, as do the video games Overkill's The Walking Dead and that Daryl origin game Survival Instinct being set in the TV universe, even if both of these games are utter shite. So I'll be using examples from the comics, TV show, and games for footage and examples. The most basic form of a zombie apocalypse retaining inspiration from the lore of Romero's Living Dead series, The Walk of The Walking Dead have everything going against them when it comes to a moniker of preparedness amongst the population as well as just not being that threatening. In my last five episodes, we had been discussing endgames that would progressively get worse and worse when it came to the doomsday creators themselves. Infected that mutate ferociously within a two week period, invasive alien species hijacking your body to make a big ass meat pile of tentacles and hive mind intelligence, and then we just have a bunch of zombies popping up walking around and groaning. Oh no, better start walking slightly faster than an evening stroll through the park or else they're gonna get me. Oh no. Much like 90% of any other zombie apocalypse, the origins of the virus are completely unknown and it eventually spirals the foundation of humanity and civilization to crumble within a relatively short period of time, leaving behind struggling groups of survivors who ultimately either go from safe haven to safe haven until it's overrun or mutiny slash anarchy occurs or well, that seems to be about the basis of every kind of zombie storytelling. <laughs> the zombies, or as this universe dictates them as walkers, since our fiction of zombies doesn't exist in the laid out lore created by Kirkman, following many archetypes of the stereotypical reanimated corpse. Literally dead bodies coming back to life with nothing but the thought of devouring the flesh of the living. They rot, stink, and shamble around in a very stiff manner due to the effects of rigor mortis. Mostly just walking around looking for prey to bite into, they don't do much else beyond wander around, either alone or in herds, grunting and growling. They don't retain any intelligence, basic knowledge of using any tools, except for that one walker in episode 2 that figured out how to use a brick to break down a glass door, doesn't make much sense, and are relatively undying unless you destroy their brain. The Walking Dead wiki says that, as a species, Kirkman's zombies do not evolve and are permanently doomed to just deteriorate until there's nothing left but the skeleton. However, even that sentiment doesn't hold up much considering it's been more than half a decade in the series and decaying zombies are still shambling around. But what is it about a literal decaying human body that is so intimidating and deadly? Yeah, he might have a scary face, but is his actions really that terrifying if he is far away from you? For some bizarre reason, the outbreak of walkers overwhelmed and wiped out a large portion of humanity. 
Statistically speaking, out of the 6.9 billion people that lived on Earth in 2010, only about 1.4 million had survived the initial chaos, leaving a ratio of about 5,000 zombies to one survivor. But in all honesty, as I discussed in my Left 4 Dead Survive video, I just don't see how zombies of this nature could muster a starting wave large enough to overwhelm a living, intelligent, weaponized society. Yes, when they have accumulated enough dead bodies to clump together into a herd, they can be a very intimidating force to have coming at you at a sluggish pace, especially within close quarters in tight spaces. All it takes for them to kill you or force you to turn is a single bite, or in some cases exposure to their blood, guts, or bodily fluids. However, again, this sentiment is debatable considering how many characters have had walker blood and guts spewed and spread on them with open wounds and even in their mouths. Negan and his men soaked their ammunition in walker guts and blood, so those in Rick's group that survived the confrontation with minimal wounds would turn from infection and proceed to become zombies within their own safe haven. But it isn't a bite or the interaction with the undead that causes you to turn. You could be completely isolated, then die, and still come back to life as a nom nomming dead boy. Proving to be a much different form of the generic zombie virus, this specific strain has contaminated all human life on Earth, invading the brain like meningitis and lying dormant within a healthy host and only becoming active upon their own death. Shutting the brain completely down, excluding the brain stem, erasing all human aspects of the self-intelligence, which will leave behind a predatory, less than Neanderthalic walker. No major organs are functioning and numerous symptoms and external changes will occur. However, I still don't see how a body can move around and function the way they do without any working organs. Even being able to bite down hard enough with their corroding jaw muscles to not only break the skin, but rip and tear a victim's flesh, use their fingers to apparently disembowel a healthy human and be able to smell a non-decomposing person from a long distance. How? How? Won't muscles deteriorate? Won't your teeth fall out? How can you smell and make breathing noises and functions without properly working lungs? Fuck! Uh, never mind. Other, um, um, I'm, uh, I'm overthinking things. Kirkman said there is a reason they can still operate, but it hasn't been explained yet. It's kind of like South Park making fun of George R. R. Martin when it came to the dragons and zombies in Game of Thrones. Don't worry, they're coming. They're on their way. They're gonna be amazing. But instead of promising dragons, we get a bunch of dicks. And in this scenario, we're being promised explanations behind the zombies, and instead we're getting baby mama drama and two season long gunfights. Due to the fact that any kind of death not involving brain injuries will create more walkers, it's slightly more conceivable why so many geeks spawned in a short amount of time, but even at that, can people not outrun, outgun, and even outpun the zombies? Man, you must be dead tired from being dead all day. <laughs> But as I said earlier, there's just no plausible way our current society would be overthrown by this specific epidemic. With how slow moving and uncoordinated they are, it's hard to believe that they could infect able-bodied citizens at such a high rate. I doubt even in the chaos of an apocalypse that hundreds, if not thousands of these people would add to the horde's numbers. Besides the first couple of hundred cases that return to life, some people emotionally attached to the victim or bystanders attempting to help a sick looking individual would get bitten and succumb to the infection. People People that die from natural causes would be among the first wave of biters, along those who are killed in whatever kind of anarchy ensues and those who are bitten. But to even say it would create a number large enough to overwhelm an army or local police force or SWAT team or civil defense unit? Is the general public of average people stupid enough to get bitten or eaten alive by these dim-witted, slow-moving predators? You know what? Uh, don't answer that. Even if we believe that most people are too into their modern lifestyles, living through their phones, technology, and electrical equipment, that we won't be able to survive when push comes to shove, while well, I'd like to say a hell of a lot of people would learn pretty damn quickly. We can all pick up a blunt object and bop a noggin. We can all run. We can all realize a bad situation when we see one. We can all fire a gun if it came down to it. Please avoid gun control talks in the comment section. If we're looking at the United States on average since 1972, 40% of households own one 
one or more firearms. The country has a sizable police, military, and overall armed number of forces. It even goes as far to say that governments have specific plans laid out for zombie invasions. In America, it's labeled as Con Plan 8888 for military personnel to fight against threats ranging from traditional pathogenic zombies to far-fetched evil magic zombies <laughs> and even vegetarian zombies. However, this contingency plan was mainly created as a gateway strategy for a majority of people to learn how to survive in a martial law type scenario since, well, you know, zombies would effectively force the country and world into a lawless expanse and a fight for your own survival. Fear the Walking Dead barely explained the beginning of the zombie apocalypse, focusing more on the drama of drugged up teens, mothers coming to terms with their family life, and fathers trying to struggle with being a dad, and other non-explanatory substance on the origins of this virus. The Walking Dead skimmed right over it all by basically accidentally copying the hospital awakening from 28 days later, and Lee experiences the outskirts of Atlanta suddenly submerged in the undead, which he was just leaving the town and there was nothing going on, but it just kind of popped up. It's as if the narrative just snapped its fingers and thousands of people were transformed into lurkers. As if Thanos snapped and instead of half of everyone disintegrating, it was Kurtman snapping his fingers and everyone becoming zombies. Or at least half of everyone. But let's just put ourselves in the shoes of one of the survivors who are seeing the moral fabric of society crumble as chaos ensues. Would we need a copy of Max Brooks' Zombie Survival Guide in order to manage? As I said with the mostly fictitious military plan of Con Plan 8888, it is more so about the very necessities of survival with more mediocre predators in the mix. Your biggest obstacle would just be surviving by means of food, water, medicine, and a safe shelter, as well as establishing trustful relationships with people you knew before and after the outbreak. Surviving alone is an option, but good luck sleeping with one eye open. Raiding stores for supplies would be dangerous in of itself as people will be fighting for dear life to get any supplies they can, and after a while finding any non-perishable food, liquids, and medications. A steady source of water will be be crucial in surviving, but I'm not going to go fully over the fundamentals of surviving this basic scenario. Of course, these factors rely heavily on where you are when everything goes to hell in a handbasket real fast. Back to what this video is about. Combating the dead has a numerous amounts of factors to include, with the base being how prepared and armed you are. Surviving against them honestly wouldn't be the hardest thing. Keeping a blunt object, knife, or any kind of sturdy melee weapon available to cause enough damage to the cranium, the head, the brain, what have you, to subdue a walker wouldn't be hard in finding. Guns run out of ammo, blunt and bladed weapons can break down or get dull over time, and your stamina and strength will be tested to their highest capabilities. So you have to keep a steady supply of guns, weapons, and just work on your cardio basically. Sometimes these zombies like to lie still and not make noise and surprise unsuspecting survivors, even though they lack the knowledge to lure people in to thinking they are completely undead. I don't see how something that walks around all day and grunts and groans will suddenly just lay on the ground, not make any noise, and wait for somebody to come by and sneak attack them. They don't have the capability. Even though in all situations they are breathing heavily, walking around, and they will conveniently place themselves quietly, and sometimes they will have the strength to pull you through a freaking vent? What the hell is this? Resident Evil? I, 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 these, this is so freaking inconsistent, I don't even know where to start. Finding a place that is fortified though, to where walkers cannot enter or penetrate, will be key in maintaining a healthy, well, being alive. All they can really end up doing is just forming a horde of people to dogpile the outside of your settlement or safe haven, reminiscent of pre-teen girls idolizing whatever teen music idol is hot, but instead of pre-puberty girls fawning over an unapologetic Canadian, we have a lot of dead boys trying to eat your brains out. Depending on how well fortified your defenses are will determine how well it will last. The survivors of the dairy farm in the games made an electrified fence that required routine security checks for any stragglers. The fence around the prison in the comics and show needed its residents killing clingers to prevent large numbers from toppling the very rickety barrier. Of course, you could also reach a climbable high ground since the walkers lack the dexterity to climb or jump, except for this one instance. What it usually comes down to in the Walking Dead universe as the most primary threat to your survival is other surviving factions who, without the rule of law and reigning anarchy, will try to kill you for supplies, use your body for either cannibalistic, sexual, or slave-like purposes, or just distrust you enough to backstab you in the long or short run. Trusting other people in these scenarios would be a much more fearsome challenge to take on rather than bashing the noggins of a few walkers from time to time. Nobody can truly understand what kind of person they will become once martial law and the apocalypse sets in, or how 
how their friends and family will act. That's just the bottom line of it all. Rick's police partner ended up banging his wife while they thought he was dead, and then planned to murder him once he came back into the picture. Nano, Ven, don't go banging my wife if you think I'm dead now, even though I'm forever alone. <laughs> but it is better to trust someone you've known for years rather than a stranger you've just met up with in this post-apocalypse as you know nothing of their background or history or if they're trying to ruse you into a trap to steal from you, harm you, or even kill you. Also, you will need to have knowledge or know someone with knowledge on how to grow food, perform medical treatments, weapons upkeep, repairs, knowing your immediate area, and much more, which will be a primary reason to try and find trust in people you may or may not be hesitant to get to know with the whole end of the world thing going on. The Walking Dead comics and TV series started off with Man Against Zombie, then adapted to the formula of find a safe haven, have a human conflict that disrupts or destroys the safety of said settlement, and forces the survivors to migrate into the dangerous wildlands to another safe haven where, you guessed it, another group of survivors that they will try to coexist for a very brief period, and then they'll attack each other causing a war that will proceed to create a herd of walkers that come out of nowhere that take over the settlement. Rinse and repeat this until you hit a time skip where the same will happen eventually. It happens in the game series time and time again, but with more surviving on their own and out in the wilds rather than the TV show and comics where they actually get to set up a society again. Clementine finds herself alone numerous times between many different groups and still perseveres with someone else's child. Rick gets to hang his tie for longer periods of time while trying to negotiate deals with evil ringleaders before starting a war that does get a few people in his group killed and or separated. Clementine ends up alone after a major arc occurs, and no matter how banged up she is or how stacked the odds are against her, she finds a way. Rick almost always ends up relying on the help of others. Rick needed Glenn to help him get out of the tank, needed his son to prevent a friendly fire bite from Shane, Rick needing Michonne to impale the governor with a sword before being asphyxiated, Rick needing Carol to be a badass and overthrow the cannibal city of Terminus with a sniper and a few propane tanks, don't let Hank Hill see that, needing Eugene to turn the tables on Negan, and so on. That's as far as the TV show goes, and I don't want to spoil the latest season, and I haven't really read enough into the comic book versions of this gunslinger to really explain. Clementine was going as far as to being the child that relied on grown-ups until she was forced to park for the second time and had to learn to survive on her own, even stitching up her own wounds, forcing adults and children alike to come back to reality in most situations and being her own adult, and ultimately wanting to stay alone instead of in groups and managing to survive without the aid of others for long stretches of time. A kid that grew up in it all, surviving on her own half the time and becoming a parent to someone else's kid at the age of 17 without the help of others. Clementine, you're more of a badass than Rick Grimes ever was. Now, with how the lore of this universe is rather minuscule when talking about how it affects how you may or may not survive, and I pretty much had to discuss how basic survival elements come more into play than the zombies themselves, it really dictates just how weak they are as a general threat. Besides the asinine fact that they somehow dominated the majority of the world's population, the only way they could be a major danger is by being in an immediate proximity of a survivor, as well as being in large numbers as they tend to have a pack mentality at the very least, and that's the only way they can be truly intimidating. It is manageable to survive a Walking Dead apocalypse, realistically speaking, without all the theatrics of thousands of people just dying to these brain-dead, well, not brain dead because they need their brain to function, but dead bodies with barely working brains. In the case that the militaries of the world couldn't handle horde mode, just keeping either a group together, a settlement found, or just the high ground with supplies would be something to look into. But when it comes to my videos, it's more or less how deadly the actual prominent threat is. If I continue anymore, I feel like I'd be getting redundant to fill out more time. Is what I said just a jumbled mess? Well, that's because I left it up to a vote, so make sure to vote for something better next time by looking at the community team tab of my channel for votes on my next survive video. Who knows what will be next? If I missed out on anything or have your own input on how I messed up surviving the Walking Dead lore or anything else, let me know in the comments. I, it just comes down to the fact that they're slow moving, they're easy to take out after they've decayed for a little bit, they are not an immediate threat compared to like the Halo Flood, the Dead Space Necromorphs, the Left 4 Dead zombies that mutate after oh, just a couple weeks. Just compared to everything else, I don't see how this works. I don't see how you would die in this unless you just can't, you can 
barely run past a jog pace. This this universe, I'm actually going off script right now because this is the first time I'm just like, how did the people die? You will not die here unless you're an idiot. I'll just go with that. Or unless you're sickly and just can't deal with it. But anyways, the channel stays alive with your liking, commenting, and subscribing to it, and it gets to stay off the street corner by a dollar or two donation to my Patreon or YouTube live stream Super Chat, which shout out to those specific donators, Lovable Tester, Mario, NATO6141, Ricardo Ascension, Song of the Void, Castle Irene, Twilight Duck, Shilarby, Turtle Lord, Austin Langford, Maria Marone, Cheek Deja, Cheatham, Kimberly, TKX Shield, Super Amazing Hot Dog Batman, Taylor07, Light Thunder 777, Burbius Burb, Artist of the Traveler, Ninja Kirby 935, Katya's Left Eyelash, The Lonely MV14, Jimmy Fitzpatrick, Twisted Trickster, Prince Sheep 1738, Revolver Boy, Chris the Guy, Exploding Burritos Experience, Bryce the Overlord 454SS, Insane Infernape, Mama Fish, and Sloth and Goth. Thank you for that, and I tried to do that all in one breath, so I'm really out of breath. That's about it for The Walking Dead. Now I'm going to start ending these videos in a different way. Instead of saying go vote, I'm going to say what is going to be coming up next to give you a little bit more hype on what's going to be coming up in case you're not paying attention to the polls. Next time on the Why You Wouldn't Survive series, we will be covering a popular franchise involving monsters that can fit in your pants. Yep, that's right. Next time, it's Why You Wouldn't Survive My Dick. <laughs>